Okay, this is season two of RV Dream Makers. It's our first episode of season two. And we are coming to you on, this is January 30th. And we are south of Phoenix, staying in on BLM land. Um, place called Lost Horse Tanks. And you can see around us mountains the swirls the tall swirls and in this episode we leave Missouri we had to get out of Missouri quick because of the storms coming there the first week of January uh, and we missed some important things we missed a funeral we felt bad about that we missed a, uh, a retirement for me from my buddy Mark Haberberger who follows us on our adventures uh, retired from Six Flags and then Michelle's mom came with us because of the cold to get out of the cold for three weeks and we just sent her back last Tuesday to Missouri and she's already wanting to come back to Arizona because uh, it's it's not good back in Missouri um, but anyway on this episode we leave Missouri we, with a, we left late, uh, driving a little bit at night, and stopped at Joplin, Missouri, and then the next day drove all the way to Waco. And uh, at Waco, we went to uh, Chip and Joanna Gaines, uh, Magnolia and that, and you'll see all that. And then uh, after that, we headed down to Bernie, Texas outside of outside of San Antonio where we met up with some good friends of ours which we will talk about that um, you know in the video we'll do some talking over so I don't have to do all the talking now then we left there and went to Wilcox Arizona um, after a stop off in Van Horn, Texas, because it's just too far across Texas. Texas is a big state to get over to Arizona. So we had to uh, stop for the night at a place. Five hours is about the max that we like to do. Yeah, you know, any longer, under is great, but... Yeah, that's why in Arizona we're, we're moving around, not going real far each time. Uh, not only for the fuel prices, but just, it just... It's just so hard to drive with a trailer and that for such a long period so but anyway um and we went to the Chiricahua National Monument again this time we took Michelle's mom for the first time oh and while we were in Bernie I forgot to say we went and spent the day at Fredericksburg which is a neat town with a lot of shops and saw the National Pacific War Museum. Uh, we never went in the museum, but they had so much to look at outside of the museum. It took us, it would have took us forever. And again, I'll talk more about that when we get to the video of that. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Michelle's fifth time. My mother-in-law's third or fourth time, but she hasn't been here since they uh, pretty much tripled the size of it uh, to Magnolia. Pretty cold here. It's like 45 degrees. Really windy. And uh, cold. Cold for us. Probably not back to you people in Missouri. 
Missouri because it's supposed to be in single digits and snow and stuff. It's pretty chilly for here. So anyway, I'll let you look from here. There's the silos and the whole magnolia and the buildings and everything over there. Gotta walk all the way around to get in. So anyway, that's it for now. Okay, here we go to the entrance. There's Jimmy Dunn. watching all the stuff here. I'm the babysitter. Watching all the stuff from Michelle and her mom. All the stuff that they bought and they're in there shopping. Here's the whole area out here. All the food trucks through those trees. And they're now in there in that shop shopping. They went to the bakery, which is over there, which I calculated by setting here makes about $10,000 to $15,000 a day from the amount of people that went through there. So, even on a cold, windy day, it's always busy with people. So on this part, we met up with our friends, Mike and Marcy Drool. Um, Mike and Marcy are also from St. Clair, like we are. And uh, they uh, worked with me at Six Flags. That's where I really got to know them because they're about seven, eight, nine years younger than us. But um, Mike was really successful in building breweries. He worked for Anheuser-Busch and now he works uh, up high as a CEO in a big company and they uh, they um, we really enjoyed our time we spent with them we got to come over to their house twice uh, we, they took us out to eat as, as you'll see in the picture there and then uh, we uh, came over the next night and they cooked a great meal and uh, Mike just has some amazing stories because he he built breweries over in China and he ate turtle, crazy stuff like that, and was over in Germany and a lot of places in Europe. And um, probably the most impressive story he told us is, you know, he's pretty high up in the company, so he gets to use the company jet a lot to go to Mexico or even come back to St. Clair every once in a while if he needs to in an emergency because uh, his parents still live up here, up there, St. Clair. But uh, one of his pilots is the grandson of Lyndon Baines Johnson and actually played on the White House lawn when he was a little kid. 
so we thought that was really interesting um, but we really enjoyed our time with them they, they took us to our uh, pointed away for a breakfast at this Mary's tacos as you'll see in the pictures there that they had so many people working there it was so busy it was a little bitty place but the tacos were amazing they were you know what they're flour tortilla tacos not the hard shell tacos but they're made from scratch and they're incredibly good and pretty much about anything you want as far as breakfast can be put in there but it, it was pretty nice but uh, we really enjoyed our time with them okay then um, we went to Fredericksburg which was, I don't know, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes away from Bernie. And what a town. You know, we walked tons and tons of shops and just incredible uh, area and had this war museum and uh, outside of town is where Lyndon Baines Johnson had his ranch with a uh, actual, uh, almost like an airport you can fly in and out of there for like senators and that that would come down fly down to his ranch and stuff back in the day but anyway so we were at the uh, national war pacific war museum and the first thing you'll see is the uh presidents they have big plaques about the president and every one of those presidents served are like Franklin Roosevelt didn't serve in the in the uh, armed forces, but he was the one that was in charge of it from the start of World War II, and every president after that served in the armed forces all the way up to H.W. Uh, Bush, and uh, it was really impressive to see because there were some of them I realized. Well, you knew Eisenhower did. But I did not realize that Kennedy did and and uh, uh, the rest of them. Every single part, Jimmy Carter, you know, every one of them served in the armed forces. Every president, Reagan, Ford, Carter, all of them. But anyway, uh, there was plaques on that, but then the amazing amount of plaques everywhere on the walls. I mean, it was just unbelievable i i'd say in this whole area it was like a huge area there had to be over ten thousand plaques i asked the lady inside and she didn't know she did say that there was somebody around that knew how many there had to be well over ten thousand plaques maybe more than that um the thing was it was uh people uh relatives of these people or maybe even the people themselves or their wives or whatever when they were still alive uh, put had these plaques put on there and then there was plaques for every every uh, naval ship in the Pacific fleet up to and it's unbelievable when you think of how big our Navy was and how incredible it was and then I'll have Michelle tell you about the garden there at the same place well it was just a tribute to it was a Japanese garden and had the raked, how they raked the um, rock and it had the hut and stuff like that there that me and mom went through and the, the plants and stuff. So. for a little bit all three of us looks 
looks like there's a good lookout up here. There's Gloria and Michelle behind me. And this is going to be a lookout that we go to. And we got to go down this. Me and Michelle were not here at this spot last year. Here we are. Oh, we're at 10. We went wrong. Can you see the large trees on the canyon bottoms and on the opposite slopes? Weathering and erosion have produced a mosaic of different habitats. Canyon bottoms and north facing slopes are slightly cooler and more moist than surrounding areas where water and soil are sufficient. Trees such as Douglas fir and ponderosa pine thrive. Looks like a fire went through there. Yep. Yeah. There's the snowy mountains over there. Mm. See, I think so the tree. How did these form? Here, Mom, come stand over um, here. Erosion after a volcano. Well, what is the water? No, it was like 10,000 years of erosion and wind. Huh. Look at that. Okay, we're on Echo Canyon, headed to the grottos. Um, which is where we kind of ended last year. There's a, uh, you can see up on top of that mountain, it's a tower, lookout tower. You can see these guys behind me. There's a uh, neat little rock back there, balancing. That's what the Joshua trees look like, is yucca trees. This is our first hike of season two. Back in the Chiricahua National Monument. I'm waiting on Michelle and her mom to catch up. They're stopping and looking at everything. Okay, here's a rock balancing on this base. You can see out here, we're getting close to the grotto. Echo! Called Echo Canyon.
just balancing everywhere. We're getting down here near the grotto area. enjoyed this episode our first one for season two we're only going to be putting out our videos every two weeks because you know we're not going to be on the road as much as we were last year so we're going to keep it spaced out every two weeks um, so that way it'll go throughout the whole year but uh, remember God loves you but only Jesus can save you see ya